Hey everybody, Riot Mort here, and it is time for another PBE rundown, where a new set, or in this case, our final mid-set, is heading to the PBE, uh, and so we're going to go over all the changes you can expect, and for those of you that like to play on the PBE and help test things out, this is so you know what you're getting into. Um, as always, I'm just one representative of the hard-working team at Riot, the TFT team, who has put together this set from the set's lead like Sam, to all the designers, artists, engineers, product leads, QA, and more. So again, on behalf of the entire team, thank you, and we can't wait for you to play this set. Now, as I mentioned, Horizon Bound is our last mid-set for Runeterra Reforged. After this, we'll be switching to the three sets a year model. Um, but yeah, we didn't want that to necessarily mean this is like a small mid-set or anything like that. So yeah, with that, let's just jump right in and talk about all the changes you can expect. First off, we have to say goodbye. As always with any mid-set, you can't add some things without taking some things out. The big things to note here are Shadow Isles, Yordle, Deadeye, and a few other carries are getting knocked out here. So we say goodbye to Maokai, Tristana, Viego, Kled, Timo, Zed, Akshan, Garen, Kalista, Lissandra, Gwen, Lux, Urgot, Yasuo, Zeri, and Senna. Now me personally, I'm, I'm a little sad to lose things like Kalista and Gwen and Akshan. They were favorites of mine, but Again, got to add some new stuff. So hope you enjoyed those champions. They'll go in the backlog. Maybe we'll see them again someday. And yeah. All right. In addition, some of the champions that exist right now are changing. They're getting their traits changed. For example, if Deadeye is gone, what does that mean for Jin and Ash? Well, they become Vanquishers, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, De uh, Poppy is actually sticking around. But now that she's not a Yordle, she can actually have some really strong stats. And you can see here, gets a pretty big buff to HP, Mana, uh, AD, things like that. And so Poppy should actually be a more durable one-cost carry now that she's not bogged down by that Yordle trait. Ash gets some adjustments as well. Now Swain doesn't get any trait adjustments here, but he did get a spell rework. One of the big things is that he was very powerful in Stage 2 because he would gain so much health but then he'd be monolocked for five or six seconds. And in the late game, that basically made him not really viable as a tank. So now we're changing it so he's not monolocked, and what'll happen is he'll gain HP when he casts his spell. Then from there, he can actually gain more mana, and he'll repeatedly cast his spell. He can actually stack up that health. Uh, so it should be a little bit more of an interesting version and stack up really well. It should make three star a lot more exciting, more viable. Um, so yeah, check that out. <clears throat> Darius is also gaining the Vanquisher trait, but by gaining that Vanquisher trait, he does have to come down in power a bit. That is going to make him a little stronger, so he trades that trait for some stats. Uh, Rek'Sai, similar. Rek'Sai is going to gain Slayer, which is going to help with that Omni Vamp, but overall, just a few minor adjustments. Uh, Aphelios, this is a big one. Uh, Aphelios, we've got our eye on, because instead of a Deadeye, he's now a Gunner, and Gunner is very good for Aphelios itemization, so... We do want Aphelios to be good, but he's probably going to be the favored Piltover cash out now. So we have to keep a real close eye on him. Uh, so that being said, he is getting nerfed quite a bit here. Uh, we're also trying to make him a little less reliant on uh, Ginsu's. He's always going to be reliant on it. That's just the way his kit is designed. But it should be less bad if you don't have a Ginsu's. So you can see here... The mana got increased, the AD went down, armor and MR went down, rage went down, attack speed went down, and that chakram AD went down. Um, so, But again, he's gaining a lot of AD from Gunner now. Should be very viable in Gunner comps. And then finally, Heimerdinger here, uh, no longer a Yordle. So, you know, he's still really powerful five cost. Shrink is getting nerfed, and this is part of a Shred and Sunder change that you're gonna see across all the items and champions. So it's not that we're trying to nerf Heimer with this so much as all Sunder and Shred is being nerfed across the board, which I'll talk about a little later. Uh, and then Mechano Burn is being nerfed a bit. The 3% true damage was just a little much here. So it's going from 1, 2, 3 to 1, 1, 2. But in exchange, get some damage at that second Mechano. Now, those are just mostly the champs that got big reworks or trait changes. But there are all other balance adjustments as well. Galio's getting changed a little bit to be able to cast more often. Jinx is getting a small buff. Vi is getting that Sunder nerf that we talked about, but a spell shield buff to, a, to compensate. Warwick is getting a mini rework here, where when he casts, instead of gaining double the heal, he's actually going to gain more attack speed, 
This should help Ravenous Hunter and make him pretty interesting. Uh, Jace. Jace is a champion that's kind of been a trait bot the entire set. Uh, so we're trying something a little different here where the ally attack speed is going down quite a bit. But he self gives him even more attack speed and could hopefully be played as a carry if you want to consider him as a three cost carry. Uh, Tarek, Tarek and Shen are definitely champions we've got our eye on as we head into the mid set. But to start with, Tarek's shield now only redirects 50% of the damage received by allies, not all of it. Uh, just that much immunity and that much blocking to his allies was just a little too much. Actually, who am I lying? It was a lot too much. It was, it was too much. It made him really hard to balance, especially around invokers. Uh, so we're adjusting that to hopefully make him a little bit more of a selfish tank and less a, I mitigate all the damage from everyone around me. Uh, Velkaz is getting a small buff here to help with some sorcerer issues. Nasus is getting a bit of a buff, trying to make the Bonk build a little more viable. I don't know if it will be, but it could be fun. Uh, Aatrox is getting not nerfed. This looks like a nerf uh, because the health is going down. But what's actually going on is Aatrox benefits from Darken, even if he you know is alive. So because he benefits from that, he's gaining even more health. And so his actual number here is 1250. So it is a bit of a buff to Aatrox. And then Zon Rise, same thing as all the other Sunder and Shred, getting nerfed to 20%, a little bit of damage to compensate. So that's it on the champion side for existing champions. Let's talk about the new champions. So a few champions here. Uh, Nefiri is a two cost Darken Shurima challenger. And you'll see later that Darken is now a two piece trait. So you can do some cool stuff with Nefiri and uh, Aatrox and then plays really well with Shurima and Challenger. Quinn is a Demacia Slayer. It makes Demacia really easy to play now because you can play Kale and Quinn plus one more and you've got a nice Demacia Slayer game going. Fiora, uh, kind of a reprint, but in a fun way. Fiora does that Blade Waltz, has that true damage. Should be a tank buster here. It's a Demacia Challenger. Uh, Mordekaiser, this guy, this guy is scary. Uh, Noxus Slayer, his spell is he, you know, hits really hard. He's got that slow attack speed, but man, when he hits, he hits really hard. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for Scoped Weapons Mordekaiser. I think that's going to be dangerous. Silco is back. I don't think anyone was predicting Silco back, but here he is uh, with a brand new spell. Uh, he's a kind of an AoE dot mage. He throws down these poison clouds and allies standing in that heal and enemies standing in it take damage so pretty cool i'm looking forward to playing a lot of silco games i think he's kind of my favorite new champion we'll see and then zaya is a pretty cool new champion an ionia vanquisher uh, her ionia bonus is mana on hit so that lets her cast her spell even more often and her spell is a ton of feathers she's going to be casting her spell a lot especially with three or six ionia active she's not a ginsu's user give her stuff like Deathblade, infinity edge uh, those are going to make that spell hit really hard. So don't think of her as a Ginsu's user. All right. On the new trait side, as you saw, uh, we have a new class called Vanquisher. Pretty simple. We like to keep our classes pretty simple and easy to understand. Uh, this trait gains crit and critical strike damage. These, if you like big crits, these are for you. And we'll see a change here later that helps critical strikes. But overall, these are for big crits. So if you like those big gin crits, ash crits, etc., there you go. Uh, Neela is the one new champion. We'll talk about her in a split second. Um, but yeah, Vanquishers, big crits, good stuff. All right, Bilgewater is our biggest new vertical. Uh, Bilgewater has seven new champions and it can go all the way up to a nine piece. So it's one of those big, big verticals here. Uh, Bilgerat attacks and abilities mark enemies. The mark stores a percentage of the damage dealt to the enemy. And then after they're struck, uh, they take a flat damage plus a percent of that, that damage. So the way this works is let's say you have three Bilgewater in and Graves hits somebody with a spell. They're now marked, and let's say that spell did 100 damage. They're marked and 25% of that, so 25, is added to the cannonball. For two seconds, you can keep attacking. So maybe you do another 100, that's another 25 damage. And so that's 250, a cannonball for 250 will fall on them. Basically, it's a, it's a, there's a little bit of flat damage here with that initial cannonball 200. And then it's a damage amp for a limited window of time. So it can make your spells hit really hard. 
Uh, overall, pretty fun vertical the more you've got, because all the Bilgewater units can also power up each cannonball. It's not like only Graves can power up his cannonball. So you can stack it all in and have big cannonballs. It's pretty neat too, because the more damage the cannonball is going to do, it scales in size. So you can get some wild stuff where like giant cannonballs are dropping. It's great. So definitely enjoy that. Uh, as far as the champions go, we have Graves, a Bilgewater Gunner Rogue. Uh, so he can be a rogue, he can jump to the back line, power up some uh, gunner comps. Alawi is a pretty basic tank. Bilgewater Bastion has that armor and MR. Twisted Fate, Bilgewater Multicaster. Kind of replaces Teemo. There are some good, you know, multicaster reroll comps. TF can definitely dish out the damage. Uh, Misfortune, this is a cool one. Uh, instead of casting that, that rain of bullets she used to, she casts this X. And that X can do decent damage. She's pretty strong. She casts a lot. So definitely look out for her. Nautilus, a really solid three cost tank. Also helps Juggernaut now that Juggernaut is going to be able to play around that front line. Uh, so there's actually some really solid Juggernaut front lines now that Nautilus is a tank at the three cost space. Uh, Neela. Neela is a Bilgewater Vanquisher. A uh, lot of good auto attacks. She'll jump around. She works really well. She has a lot of cleave. You're going to want to give her a lot of AD. Um, pretty cool champion. And then finally, uh, Gangplank we have to talk about. Gangplank, the Reaver King. Uh, uses his Cutlass, and you can put him in the front two rows or the back two rows, and that will change his passive. If he's in the back two rows, he basically shoots his gun from afar, pew, 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 uh, and gets a little bit of extra mana, which will help him cast quicker. But if you put him in the front row, he gains 50 armor and MR, which helps him survive, and all of his attacks ignite them, dealing true damage over three seconds, which is great. So you can go either way based on your itemization, figure out what you like better. And then his spell, if you've seen some of the gifts on Twitter, uh, he summons a boat in that sails across the board, crashing into the first enemy it hits, dealing magic damage in a radius. And any ally that the boat passes through uh, gain 30% attack speed and immunity to crowd control. So he can buff his allies and do some damage. So even if you're playing an itemless gangplank, getting that buff to your team can be pretty nice. Um, but yeah, pretty cool champion. And then our last one, uh, Ixtal. Uh, for those of you that maybe liked Mutant or Admin or things that are different every game, Ixtal is going to be for you. Uh, there are three champions. Milio, who's a one-cost invoker, throws his, his little soccer ball, uh, does some damage and a little stun. Kiana, who's a Slayer Rogue, jumps to the back line, does some big damage. And then Nico. Nico is not a tank, even though she's an Ixtal Bastion. She's actually more of a frontline magic dammer, damage user. Uh, so consider that if you want to put some like good items on her to make her do more damage, like Ionic Spark, Death Cap, things like that. Uh, and then, so the way Ixtal works is every game is different. There are actually six variations. For example, in this game, it's fire. Uh, if you have two Ixtal in, one fire hex will appear. And any champion standing in that, not just an Ixtal champion, but any champion will gain a benefit. If you have three Ixtal in, you'll get two hexes. And if you get four, they'll get an extra power up to their ability. And you can see it with our little nub right there by the lock button. So you can always check what it is. Uh, so for example, fire here is damage from an empowered champion's ability sets enemies on fire, dealing 45% of their ability damage as magic damage and 1% burning them for three seconds. So it applies that burn. And if you've got four Ixtal, that doubles to 90%. So you can make one person's spell really strong. Kind of cool, for example, if you have like an Ari on there and her big wave just hits everybody and sets them ablaze. So pretty cool. And like I said, there's six different variants. We've got Wind, which is all about attack speed. We've got Stone, <clears throat> excuse me, which uh, empowers the champions to be immune, can crowd control and take less damage for a bit. We've got Ice, which basically gives them like a Zanya's Ice Block effect, where when they get below 30% health, it protects them and heals them a little bit. Uh, we've got electric, which allows their abilities to gain an extra stun. And then we have wood, another favorite of mine, uh, if you remember mountain hexes. Uh, wood empowers the champion to gain more health and start gaming permanent health. I'm looking forward to a wood Cho'Gath game, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, so every game of Ixtal is different. Pretty cool, it's a great splash trait. Should be a ton of fun. <clears throat> All right, on the trait side, two changes I want to talk about. The first one is 
over time we had this rule where anything that required an emblem or an augment became prismatic. So something like four Freljord, because there were only three Freljord champions, was prismatic. The problem was it made prismatics feel a lot less special and not necessarily powerful. Um, so we're changing that. The way it now works is if we want something to be extremely powerful and hard to hit, we will make it prismatic and everything else will still count as gold. So for example, if you look at the current set, six Piltover, nine Bilgewater, nine Demacia, nine Ionia, nine Noxus, and nine Shurima. These are prismatics. They're going to be very powerful. You're going to see later we're buffing them up. Um, they're meant to be win conditions. If you hit a prismatic trait, it should be very clear that you are strong now. We don't want to see nine Demacia losing to some random board. We want to see these traits be very powerful if you can hit them. But as for everything else, that means they're back to gold. So things like eight Bastion, eight Challenger, eight Invoker, uh, which we'll talk about later, eight Sorcerer, eight Void, six Gunner, six Vanquisher, six Zaun, five Strategist, five Ixtal, four Ixtal, four Targon, and three Freljord are just gold. Uh, they're still strong. They're still balanced around where they should be. But we want to make it very clear that if it says prismatic, it's strong. Be happy. Uh, last small change here, and this is to help Vanquisher, but really just in general. Uh, right now in the game, if you have more than 100% critical strike and you get any extra, it's converted at a rate of 50%. So another 10% critical strike chance becomes 5% critical strike damage. That conversion's pretty wasted. We want to make sure it's not wasted, that you feel decent about it. So we're raising that to 80%. So if you're running Vanquisher and you end up putting, you know, Hodge and Guardbreaker on that champion, you're not necessarily wasting much of your stats. So should be decent and help make sure that there aren't any really like trap item builds around Critical Strike. All right, other adjustments. Bastion is getting a pretty big nerf because uh, we're not just nerfing Sunder and Shred, but we are also nerfing some of the top end armor and MR builds. So you can see here Bastion goes down pretty heavily at two, four, and six especially. Eight's still pretty strong, um, but nothing too crazy. Even that's gone down in power quite a bit. Uh, Darken, as I mentioned, Darken has changed that now there's two. If you have one, they transfer their weapon. Uh, each Darken has a different weapon. And then at two, those weapons become 50% stronger. So pretty cool if you're willing to run two Darken. Uh, Demacia. Demacia gets a couple big changes here. The first one is that you'll notice the word random is gone. Now the way it works is there's no randomness around the Radiant item. Every champion will get the same Radiant item every time. Unless it's a repeat, then it'll kind of have a secondary item. Uh, so you'll know no more like, I mean, Lux is gone, but no more Morello Lux versus Jeweled Gauntlet Lux kind of changing the outcome of the fight should lead to fights being sort of standard power. Now, the armor and MR did get nerfed at uh, 5 and 7, because again, part of our Shred and Sunder change. But you'll notice 9 here. 9 is a prismatic trait. It got buffed a lot. It's now up to 150 armor and MR. And we've got our eye on it. We might even buff it more. We want 9 Demacia to be very strong. All right, Freljord. Freljord has lost Lissandra. So instead of a 2-3-4, it's now a 2-3. Uh, but it also has gone up in power a bit. Because the Sunder and Shred went down, you get a little bit more true damage burn. And at three piece, no more Mono Reeve, no more free Mono Reeve, but you still get the stun. So if you're willing to run three Freljord, you get that big stun. Again, minor splash trait here, nothing too crazy, uh, but can be a decent replacement for that Sunder and Shred if you need it. Invoker. Not much has changed with Invoker. All the stats are still the same, but we hear you. It was finally time to add eight Invoker. So eight Invoker is in, it gives 40 mana regen to all, not that much more mana regeneration. You go from 35 to 40, but they also get an additional 40 ability power. So again, this is not a prismatic. We're not looking for it to be like a win, like you definitely win, but it will be strong. So should be good to go. Uh, Ionia, nothing too crazy changed here, different champions. But again, nine being this prismatic now, you'll notice it went from three to four enlightened. So you get another spirit and some more uh, Ionia power. So these units should be very strong. Nine Ionia is meant to be a Prismatic. Uh, Noxus, same thing. Noxus, big change here though, instead of it being a 369, is now a 3579. So there should be a little more variation in the way you're willing to build them and things like that. So numbers have been tuned accordingly. Uh, and I will say nine will probably even get buffed from here. So 
We do want you to, again, maybe be chased by that nine Noxus. All right, Rogue. I don't have a fancy screenshot for this, but Rogue, last patch we shipped an update to their move ability to make sure they work. And we're continuing to try to buff them to get them to a spot where they can actually be playable. Uh, now the way it works is you can apply the bleed from any damage, ability or auto, not just one or the other. And they no longer are limited to apply that bleed once. Every damage instance applies a new bleed. They don't stack though. So it's basically like, are you bleeding? If so, keep bleeding. And then you bleed for three seconds, doing 35% of your max HP. Uh, so they can do, again, pretty big damage boost, but it does take time for that bleed to kick in. Hopefully this should get rogue playable. And again, hold us accountable. We want to make sure there are four rogue builds that are viable. So definitely keep an eye on that. Sharima. Sharima gets a small adjustment here. Uh, now it is a 2469. Uh, so 246 helps it be pretty playable in a bunch of different ways. If you want to play something like Reroll Nefiri, you can play Cassiopeia, Renekton, Nefiri, Talia, get that four piece, get them all ascended and feel pretty good about that. Go to six, play around Azir and Nasus. But if you're willing to hit nine, that's that big prismatic chase trait and will be very powerful where you get that double ascension. So cool. Slayer has been adjusted. There are more of them now, but generally the same trait. It's a two, four, six. They gain some Omnivamp. They gain some bonus damage that doubles against targets who are low health. So pretty standard, just some trait adjustments here. Sorcerer hasn't changed too much here. Uh, the numbers I think are still pretty in flux as well. Just ability power and chain lightning, nothing crazy there. And then Zaun, this one's actually a big change. So Zaun lost a unit, which means it's pretty hard to get to six Zaun now. Uh, we didn't want to block you from having lots of fun with Zaun. So the way it works is at two, you get one chem mod. At four, you get two chem mods and they overcharge now. So you can overcharge at four. And then at six, if you can somehow hit six, again, not a prismatic, but still powerful, you get five chem mods and they overcharge. And so five chem mods is a lot, but you can do some good stuff with them. Now, to compensate, of course, we did have to adjust the chem mods. We also tried to adjust a few that weren't working on certain champions. Our goal here was to try to make sure every chem mod could at least be like kind of playable on a bunch of different combinations here. Uh, so Adaptive Implant just gets a bit of an overcharge nerf. Again, since it's pretty easy to hit at overcharge. Uh, Hextech Exoskeleton has been reworked. Now it says deal 10% more damage and take 10% less damage. Every five seconds, restore 15% of your max HP. And then if you overcharge it, you are now immune to CC and the heal is increased to 25% of your max HP. I think this is going to be really good on Ravenous Hunter. Uh, but it's nice that Ravenous Hunter isn't, you know, reliant on one or two particular mods. This should be a cool one. Being immune to CC seems pretty good. Uh, robotic Arm is now, the overcharge has changed. It's now your attack and abilities deal 10% additional damage as true damage. So no more weird AD ratios. It's just have some bonus true damage. Uh, Shimmer Injector does get a bit of a nerf at overcharge because again, overcharge is easier to hit. The heal goes down from 100 to 60 and the attack speed bonus goes from 400% to 200%. All right, Unstable Chem Tank. We can't be really having a bunch of Jarvins running around with this every game. Uh, so the HP gained has been nerfed, the explosion damage has been nerfed, and the overcharge damage has been nerfed pretty substantially. You still get the increased hex radius. It should still be okay. We just don't need it instantly deleting every backline. So this is getting nerfed. And then Virulent Bioware is getting reworked here. So now the way it works is after casting your ability, any damage you deal in the next three seconds, so it can be auto attacks, it can be ability damage, doesn't matter, uh, will then debuff the enemy, causing the enemies to take 15% more damage for four seconds. So this should allow even like Warwick to be able to use this, right? You cast your ability, do some auto attacks, you're spreading that virulent. No more being bound to just Zeri. Uh, and then the overcharge is nerfed a little bit, but duration still 10 seconds, 3% max burn. So yeah, should make Zon pretty interesting to play. All right, that's it for champs and traits. Now the other big thing here is that items have been changed in the game to be in four buckets. There are core items, which are items that you build out of components, and core items will always make the champ that's wearing them stronger. Radiant items, which are powerful versions of core items, and then artifacts, which are unique items that you can't build, but make the wearer stronger. And finally, support items, which you put on somebody 
and they make everyone around them stronger in some way, not necessarily themselves. Now to fit this bucket, that meant six item recipes needed to change. We had six items in our main system that weren't really core items. You know, you didn't put a Zeke's on somebody to make them powerful. You put them to make someone next to them powerful. And so we have six new items here. Uh, Locket has been replaced with Crown Guard. Crown Guard uh, gain a 30% max health shield for eight seconds. When the shield expires, gain 40 ability power. Really good on a frontliner that loves HP and AP. Uh, so if you want somebody to be a little tanky for a while and then do some burst, this can be pretty good. Even works pretty well on someone like Shen, for example, or Sejuani. Uh, pretty good. Uh, Night Harvester. This is replacing Shroud. Uh, so now it's, you know, it's another crit item, which is pretty nice. It gives some armor, uh, gives some AP as well. Uh, deal 12% bonus damage, increase to 30% while below 60% health. So if you're somebody who likes to dip down and heal up, uh, this can be a really good item. So check it out. Uh, Even Shroud. This is a tank item that replaces Zephyr. You gain 15 armor and MR for the first 10 seconds of combat, so you're a little tankier. And much like Ionic Spark, it applies 30% Sunder to enemies within two hexes. So this is, we finally have the Sunder version of Ionic Spark. Uh, you trade it off by it being not that tanky of an item, and it doesn't have any special burst or anything, because Sunder is always very valuable. Um, but this means you don't have to build Last Whisper. And again, part of our Sunder and Shred nerf is to make sure these aren't like absolutely necessary. But if you want it, here it is. Uh, Nasher's Tooth is meant to be an item that just in case, you know, you like attack speed, but don't always want to build Ginsu's. Uh, after attacking, after casting an ability, gain 40% attack speed for five seconds. And yes, this does stack. So if you want to put this on like Azir, for example, it's very good. But even someone like Aphelios, who has a high cast uh, casting cost, can gain that attack speed, get back to casting. You can stack this with something like Shoujin. But yeah, should be a nice attack speed item if you're looking for it and you want that AP. Uh, Steric Gage. If you've been playing any, uh, you know, AD frontliners, you usually have to build some combination of Titans, Bloodthirster, you know, things like that. This gives you another option. Uh, once per combat at 60% health, gain 25% max health uh, and 30% attack damage. Now this is cool because you gain that max health. I think this pairs really well with Edge of Night as well, because then you can drop that aggro, heal up for it. So something like Sterics plus Edge of Night plus Bloodthirster, and you can drop down and heal up and be really defensive. So pretty neat. And then finally, one of my favorites here is Adaptive Helm. Uh, replacing Chalice, Adaptive Helm at the combat start, based on where you put it, uh, does two different things. If you put it in the front row, you gain 30 armor and MR. So if you want a tanky item, there you go. If you put it in the back two rows, you gain 20 ability power and 15 mana every three seconds. So good alternative to something like Shoujin, uh, if you just need that passive mana regen and want to get that going, uh, can be really good. So you're not ne necessarily having to build Shoujin. So pretty cool. And the, the way you can flex around that item is great. We also took the time to do a bunch of uh, adjustments on the base items. This looks like a lot, but it's really just minor adjustments to get things where we want them. I'll go over it quick. Archangels, a little less starting mana. We don't like everyone like rushing to that first cast, so we're trying to lower starting mana across the board. Uh, but does get more AP per five, so it stacks up and can be better in the late game compared to or late late parts of fights as opposed to death cap. Uh, Bramble Vest, the critical strike reduction is being nerfed. It's just a little too hard counter to crit builds, so lowering that down to sixty percent. Chalice, as I mentioned, is now a support item. We'll look at that later. Dragon's Claw, lower MR. Again, this is part of the, the Shred and Sunder. We don't need super tanks being so unstoppable, so that's getting lowered a little. Uh, Gargoyle Stoneplate, five less base armor and MR, same thing. Guardbreaker, we want this to be an item that is a little bit more flexible, and so we also are looking for a few more attack speed items in the game. So we're shifting its power from attack damage to attack speed. Uh, it's getting 30% attack speed too, which I think is phenomenal. This should make it very good on AP users especially, but even AD users should be happy with that 30% attack speed and that shield breaker. So I, I would be on the lookout. I, I think this is one of the bigger changes to be aware of. Uh, Ionic Spark, as we mentioned, Shred goes down to 30, but gains a little MR and AP to buff that up. 
Last Whisper, same thing. Sunder down to 30, but gains some AD and attack speed to make up for it. Locket is now a support item. Protector's Vow, 5 less armor and MR. Part of those Sunder changes. Uh, Rapid Fire Cannon, this is another big change. The attack speed is going from 55 to 33, so it is less attack speed than things like Nasher's Tooth and Ginsu's, but now comes with deal 12% more damage. So, casters now can actually use this item and feel like their spells are hitting harder. Uh, so it should be a more viable option than just only being on attack speed users and being like kind of a, a second grade Ginsu's. That 12% damage should be pretty valuable. Now, we also took off the tooltip no longer states your attacks cannot miss. That was outdated. We don't have dodge anymore. Uh, Redemption. The bonus heal effect is getting changed a little bit here. Uh, and then reduced AoE damage has now been changed to just 12% reduced damage from all sources. I think this makes this item really powerful and a lot less confusing to use. What was an AoE spell, what wasn't, was very hard to figure out. So that's been changed. Uh, Static Shiv, Shred goes down to 30, some attack speed and AP to make up for it. Uh, Spear of Shojin, like I said, less starting mana, so lowering that from 30 to 15. Titan's Resolve, a little less armor and MR, again, part of the Shred and Sunder stuff. And then Zeke, Zephyr, and Zerat are now moved to the support item pool. On the artifact side, so again, this is things like the Orn items are now all called artifacts. Uh, most of them haven't changed, there's not too much going on here. Uh, first off, though, any gold generating items will not be offered on stage four and beyond. So if you're on past stage four, you're not going to see something like collector. Uh, Eternal Winter gets a little less armor. Again, the shred and sunder changes. Goldmancer Staff is now an artifact. Uh, so you can get that without shimmer. It's now just an artifact if you want it. It grants some ability power. It grants those gold on kill if, if you're lucky. Now its maximum uh, power has been reduced a little. We don't want you stacking 60 gold necessarily, but should still be a fun item. Hull Crusher, a little less armor and MR, same thing. Mogul's Mail is now an artifact as well, so you can get this as well from something like Portable Forge. Uh, Obsidian Cleaver and Randuin Sanctum are out of the artifact pool. Those are now support items. And then Trickster's Glass, we made a slight quality of life change here. The clone is now slightly transparent during planning phase. So hopefully no more people looking at that in the clone and going, wow, you're close to three star. Uh, so hopefully that helps with some confusion around that. All right, finally we have support items. Now this is the new type of item and support items all standardly give their wear 250 health. Cause again, it's not about powering up the person who's wearing it. It's about powering up everyone around them. Now you can get these through various sources like augments, portals, random drops, things like that. Um, but let's go over some of these. Some of these are new and some of these are old favorites. Uh, Aegis of the Legion. Uh, I kind of call this one Reverse Shroud, but basically it sends a line backwards and at combat start, 30% attack speed and 20 armor and MR to the holder and allies behind them for 10 seconds. So starts them going for a lot of power. Uh, Banshee's Veil grants the holder and the allies next to them on the left and the right. Uh, CC immunity for 18 seconds. So you can give three people a Quicksilver Sash, which is kind of cool. Uh, Shroud of Sildness, uh, same old Shroud you love. Shoots a beam that Mana Reeves, 30%. Uh, and your team gains 100 health. So it has been powered up a little bit. Uh, Obsidian Cleaver, damage dealt 30% shreds and sunders enemies for 15 seconds. Most of the time you're putting this on a support champion, not your main carry. So this person is here to provide that shred and sunder. Really good on someone like Ash, for example. Uh, Locket of the Iron Solari is now back to two hexes. So it's five people. You can use it like you did in the old days. And what's interesting now is it grants not only the shield, but 25 armor and MR for 20 seconds. So a big problem with this item was like, it'd only be good on things like Bastion that had high harm, armor and MR that could utilize the shield. Well, now it can actually be good on something like Bruisers because they get that armor and MR uh, from this item and get a lot of effective health. So pretty cool. Should make Locket pretty interesting. Uh, needlessly Big Gem is now a support item. Uh, works the way it does before. If after 15 seconds, you gain some gold for each living ally and some bonus damage. Randuin's Omen, combat start. Give everyone touching it 33 armor and MR. Pretty cool. Uh, Chalice, this one's changed a little bit. Uh, combat start, grant 20 ability power and 15 mana 
to the holder and all allies within two hexes. So this means it has locket range, that five range, but they all get 20 ability power and 15 mana. So really good in something like a sorcerer comp when you want everyone to a a cast really quickly. So should be a more powerful version of the uh, Q-Cone. Uh, Virtue of the Martyr. This is a new item if you want healing. Really good in like brawler comps, bruisers. Uh, every five seconds, heal all allies for 7% of their max health. When the holder dies, that healing doubles and continues for 10 seconds. Uh, so you can provide a lot of passive healing to the team if you want. Uh, Zeke's, much like Chalice, is now two rows. Really good in gunner comps, as it always has been, because now you can power up even more people. Um, so that's pretty cool. Zerat Portal has changed to kind of be like its Radiant version, actually, where right at the start of combat, that large Void Spawn is coming out and taunting. Uh, So you don't have to wait till the user dies. There's no weird positioning there. It's just have a free Frontliner. And then finally, Zephyr. Zephyr is still around. You can still play with it. Um, Summon a Whirlwind on the opposite side, removing the closest enemy for five seconds, and your team gains 10% attack speed. So, So there you go. Support items. Pretty cool, new t- new category. And now over time, if we feel like adding some new artifacts or support items, we can just do that and it'll be fun. Uh, new portals, there are for our new regions. Uh, and one thing to note, by the way, is even though Shadow Isles and Yordles are gone, their portals are not. Their portals are sticking around. You can still play with all their portals. But in addition, we have seven new portals, three Bilgewater, three Ixtal, and one new Freljord. In Bilgewater, we have Rat Town. Starting in Stage 2, Lucky Shops can randomly appear at the start of a round once per stage. These shops feature units tailored to your army's active traits. Now, when this triggers, it triggers for everybody at the same time. So it's not some weird unfair thing or RNG. Everyone gets a Lucky Shop. Finn's Market. Twice per game, Bilgewater Trader Finn will randomly appear and offer completed artifact support or radiant items. You can choose one to keep for free. So just some cool bonus items there. Uh, slaughter docks or laughter docks as we call it uh, gain free shop rerolls equal to the stage number plus one at the start of each stage so at three one gain four rerolls now you can't save them though so you do have to use them um, so pretty cool makes stronger boards on the frail yard side we have a new one called valor's hollow gain a component anvil on two three and a support anvil on three three so if you want to play with the new support items it's a great portal for that on the Ixtel side, Serpentine River. This one's crazy. Let us know what you think of this one. The stage two and four carousels are replaced by voting rounds. Everyone gets a component anvil and the winning reward. So everyone kind of gets to vote for what they want from the carousel that's unique. Let us know what you think. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce this. Ixacan. Uh, each time players star up 20 units, all players gain increasingly valuable loot. Now this one can be a little confusing, but let me walk you through it. This is not you star up units, this is everyone. So everyone in the, in the whole game is kind of working together. Uh, and every time someone stars up a unit, the counter goes up. Every 20, everyone gets a reward. So basically it's delayed rewards over time based on the number of time people star up. Now, if everyone in the lobby starts playing reroll, Yeah, you might get more rewards quicker, but again, everyone's getting the same rewards here. And then finally, uh, Cardinal Archaeology. Uh, You will always be offered a silver, then gold, then prismatic augment in that order. So if you choose this one, you know what you're signing up for. Silver into gold into prismatic. So pretty safe, pretty standard. Cool. Finally, augments. Uh, There are not a ton of new augments, but there are some. Uh, stationary support this is a fun one but uh, again if you like support items uh, gain a training dummy in eight player combat equip the dummy with one random support item which cannot be removed stationary support two is it already has the support item and my personal favorite stationary support three uh, gain a training dummy it has three random support items equipped which cannot be removed so if you like wandering trainer but you want support items give it a try Maybe you get lucky and you get Locket, Chalice, Zeke's. Uh, can do some cool stuff with that. Uh, support cash, pretty s- standard here. Open an armory and choose one of five unique support items. So if you want to play with those, kind of like Portable Forge. There you go. And then for our new traits, they each get an augment. Uh, Rising Infamy, this will be a popular one. Uh, get a level one treasure chest. Your cannon barrages permanently improve future chests. So after you shoot 40 cannonballs with Bilgewater, You'll gain a level two chest and then a level three chest, and that'll keep powering up 
So you get more and more loot as the game goes on. Pretty cool for an economy augment. Uh, the loot table still needs some work as it goes to PBE, but let us know what you think. My guess is it's a little strong, so if you want to win PBE games, maybe try this one out. Uh, oh, and there is a Rising Infamy Plus and a Rising Infamy Plus Plus, so you don't have to feel like you're behind if you get these later. Uh, stolen Vitality. When your Vanquishers attacks an ability's critical strike, they heal the ally with the most missing health by 3% of that ally's maximum health. So crit to save your tanks. Cool. And then finally, Rejuvenating Flames. Allies heal for 7% of their max health every 5 seconds, increased by 3% for each Ixtal ally that started combat in an elemental hex. So you can do some pretty cool health regen builds with this if you want. And then of course with new traits come the basics. Bilgewater Crest, Bilgewater Crown. There is no Bilgewater Heart. We want 9 to be hard to hit. Uh, Ixtal Heart, which is gold. Ixtal Soul, which is prismatic. Vanquisher Heart, which is silver. Vanquisher Crest, which is gold. And Vanquisher Crown, which is prismatic. And of course, that's the new augments, but what would it be with a mid-set without a chance to readjust as much stuff as we can? So we went through and did a pass on all the augments. Now, generally what you're going to see here is a lot of nerfs and a few buffs, because we do think augment power has got a little inflated, just a bit. Uh, so you can expect to see some go down, a little bit of up. All right, let's power through this. Shadow Isles, Dead Eye, Yordle related augments all removed. Cool. Cybernetic Bulk 1, nerfed, a little less health. Cybernetic Leech, nerfed, a little less Omnivamp. Healing Orbs, nerfed, a little less heal. Iron Assets, this is kind of a bad augment, now gains two more gold, should be hopefully pickable. Social Distancing 1, a little less AD and AP. Tiny Power 1, a little less stats. Well Earned Comforts 1, actually buffed a bit here. Uh, this has been a little too weak for what it's supposed to be, even for a Legend Augment, so it gets buffed. Uh, seeing Double, this was a Legend Augment. We're actually changing it back to Teaming Up, but instead of it being a Zeke's, it's Gain 1 Random Support Item. So again, if you want to play Support Items, there's a Legend Augment you can get. Uh, and then Unified Resistance 1, Small Nerf, part of our Shred and Sunder changes. A little less Armor and MR, nothing too crazy. All right, next page is a doozy. Gold, a cut above, not offered on 3-2 anymore because no one really took it on 3-2. Does get a little less gold though. Uh, Adrenaline Rush, this is the Juggernaut one, lowered the max damage from 25% to 20%. Uh, all that shimmers has been removed because those items don't exist. They're either artifacts or support items, so that's gone. Uh, Contagion, 20% down to 18%. Cybernetic Bulk 2, 300 health, nerfed. Cybernetic Leech, a little less Omnivamp, nerfed. Escort Quest, no longer offered on 3-2. No one takes this augment on 3-2. Gargantuan Resolve, buffed up to 40 max stacks. Idealism, very slight nerf down to 12% damage amp. Infusion, 20 mana per 5 is now 20 mana per 6. Know Your Enemy goes from 1520 to 1218, so lowered there. Magic Wand down 2 AP, lowered there. Medium Forge, 1 less gold. Ravenous Hunter, max stacks back to 50. The most recent nerf kind of made it unplayable. We want to get it back to playable. Uh, return on investment. Buffed only needs 18 rerolls. Hard to imagine this started at 25. Uh, parting gifts. Now mutually exclusive with endless hordes. Caused some problems with endless hordes. Seeing double two is gain one random support item and five gold. Sentinel spirit. Little less attack speed. One less Ionian. Uh, Shurima's legacy. A uh, little less damage. Uh, and Shurima's given uh, one less Shreeman. So total damage of Shreema's legacy down 10%. Uh, Sleight of Hand. This one got buffed. This is for everyone wearing a Thieves Glove. They used to get 30% attack speed. Now it's 200 HP and 20% attack speed. So hopefully Thieves Gloves on Frontliner should be fun. Uh, Social Distancing 2, less AD and AP. Stable Evolution, one less Void Unit given. Stellicorn's Blessing, 45% attack speed nerfed to 35 Tactical superiority, 5% base AD down to 4. Three's a crowd, down to 100 health. Total domination, less execute. It went basically from 15% max execute to 10% max execute. which is really too good on Noxus. Uh, two healthy, down to 100 health. Unified resistance, five less armor and MR. Same thing. Uh, what doesn't kill you? Buffed, actually. So now instead of it taking five losses to get a component, it'll only take four. Uh, you have my sword, less AD. You have my bow, less attack speed. And then Winds of War has been reworked. Gain a Galio. 
Your strongest Galio's ability gets larger with each cast, and enemies hit take magic damage equal to 10% of his max HP per second. So, hopefully Galio Hero Augment should be pickable finally. And then Prismatic. Uh, blinding Speed, Unleashed Arcana, Impenetrable Bulwark, Overwhelming Force, all gain an extra corresponding component. And what I mean by that is Blinding Speed, which gives you Ginsu's and Rapid Fire Cannon, now also gives you a bow. Unleashed Arcana, which gives you Jeweled Gauntlet and uh, Death Cap, also gives you a rod. So these are now up to basically five components of value. Should put them on par with most Prismatics. Uh, Buried Treasures 3 gives six components, but again, random and over time. So trying to buff that one up. Cybernetic Leech goes down to 20% Omnivamp. Final Reserves gets a bit of a rework here. Um, we're, we like Final Reserves. We do think it's good for the game, but it had been optimized in an unhealthy way where people would take it at 3-2, sell their board, save as much gold as possible, and then trigger it, level the 9, and have like 130 gold to roll with and play with and build a board. That's not how we want it played. Uh, so what we've done here is we've lowered the XP, and the trigger reward now, instead of being gain 40 gold, it sets your gold to 50, and anything above 50 you would have gotten is converted into experience. So if you had 100 gold, you're not getting any more gold. Uh, you know, it'll just get converted into even more experience. Um, so hopefully this limits it and makes it be played the way we were intending it to be played, which is play boards and then make a last minute pivot. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. That's what PBE is for, to test these things out. So, uh, Freljord Sorrel, there's no Lissandra, so now it grants an Ash and Redemption. Infernal Contract, just 10 less gold. Uh, seeing double three, gain two random support items and three gold. Social Distancing, nerf down to 25 AD and AP. Tiny Power, slight nerf down to 15%. And Void Crown is now giving Adaptive Helm instead of Zerat Portal. So, it should say Prismatic at the top, not Silver. Oops. All right, and that's it. The thing to remember is it's PBE. This is not final. We're still making changes even, you know, I think it's nine o'clock right now. People are still working on changes. Uh, we want to make the set as good as possible. Leave us feedback. Let us know if you find bugs. Let us know if you think things are underpowered, overpowered, anything like that. Things just aren't fun. Give us that feedback. We like it. Give it to us all. Uh, hopefully everyone can get on PBE and have some fun and let us know. And remember, it's a testing environment. So two weeks until it goes live after that. But there you go. And that is the summary of Horizon Bound, our last mid-set. I hope you all are looking forward to it. The team worked really hard to put this together and should be a lot of fun. So, yeah. All right, that's going to do it for me. Hope to see you guys on the PBE in a few hours. This video is going to go live on like Tuesday at 9. It should be a few hours after that and you all be playing. So it should be good. Again, behalf on the whole t behalf of the whole team, thank you, everybody. We hope you enjoy. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, take it easy.